For me, racing cars are the prettiest cars in the world. They combine form and function like nothing else and they look especially cool when caked in grime after a hard fought race. But there's one aspect of racing cars that only becomes apparent when you see a collection of them. Some racing cars are so much smaller in real life than you think. Look at this picture of two Porsches. We've got the 911 GTE and the 919 LMP1 prototype. Now, if you looked at it by itself, you wouldn't say that the 919 is a small car, but look at it compared to the 911. It's a smidge of a thing. So why are some racing cars smaller than you think? Well, there are a couple of reasons, but the main one is the way our brains perceive some of the dimensions on the car. When you look at a prototype racing car by itself then, your brain essentially plays an optical illusion on you. It looks across the car and tries to find things to scale it. And one of the things that your eyes lock onto is the windscreen. Now, a windscreen on a prototype racing car like this Bentley Speed 8 is actually tiny, resembling more of you out of a post box than a nice big pane of glass. What your brain does then is take that tiny little sliver of glass and scale it up to normal car size, meaning that your brain interprets prototype racing cars like this. As you can see, it essentially stretches everything out to resemble a car that you're used to seeing. That is how your brain perceives a racing car like this. So it takes placing a prototype like this next to a road-based racing car to break the illusion. Now, we recently did a photo shoot with the real Le Mans winning Bentley Speed 8, and it looked tiny compared to a Bentley Continental GT racing car in the workshop next to it. The next reason is down to racing regulations. Now, different classes have different regulations, which means there's gonna be different shapes. Prototype cars have length, width, and height restrictions, but otherwise the teams can pretty much make whatever shape they want. Now, they want to keep the cars as aerodynamic as possible, so the car is essentially shrink-wrapped around the cockpit and the engine to keep that frontal area as small as possible. The cockpit technically has to be a two-seater, but they really push those dimensions to the limit. The driver inside is completely reclined, and the monocoque cell is essentially wrapped right around him. GT cars, on the other hand, have to be based on road cars, meaning that they need to keep their basic proportions. Now, the Ford GT isn't the best example of this, seeing as it started as a race car and then became a road car, making it one of the smallest GT Le Mans cars. But Take a look at the 911, the Ferrari 488 or the Aston Vantage and they need to keep their looks identical to their road going equivalent. That results in GT cars essentially looking inflated compared to prototypes. They can be longer, wider and taller. Now I think it's okay to assume that the top class of a racing series is just going to be bigger and meaner because they're going to have more aero and more tech on board. but. It simply isn't the case. Now, there is one racing series that bucks this trend, Formula One. Today's F1 cars are massive. They used to be nice compact things, but with engineers wanting their cars to go faster and faster, the wheelbase of the cars have grown. That increases the high speed stability and grip of the cars and has led to the massive F1 cars that we have today. Lewis Hamilton's Mercedes has a wheelbase of 3.76 meters, which when you compare it with this lovely little Stuart Grand Prix car from 1998, the entire length of an F1 car has increased in that time by an entire meter. So F1 cars have gone the other way. They're actually much bigger than you expect in real life. Next time you look at racing cars then, try to find some sort of reference so that you can tell at what scale the engineering is happening at. You will never look at a prototype racing car the same way again. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and comment down below with what you'd like me to explain next. And if you liked my models, subscribe. <laughs>